This video is for training purposes only. It is prohibited from being copied, distributed, or shared. The concepts, statistics, and ideas do not necessarily represent those of World Financial Group and Transamerica Financial Advisors. Hey guys, uh, a lot of times I have clients ask me, well, James, how much is the right amount of insurance? Is it, do I have too much? Do I have uh, not enough? <clears throat> do I have uh, just the right amount? So one of the things I'm going to teach you today is a method that I use to help identify the right amount of insurance for each client. I teach this to the client. That way they know that I'm not trying to sell them more insurance than they need and they know that if somebody comes around and tells them that they need more than I said they did, they can actually combat this, okay? So one of the ways that I do that is I use a, an acronym called DIME. And so you can, you can uh, utilize this and basically this acronym, like I said, is DIME. The D stands for death and debt. The I stands for income. The M is for your mortgage. And the E is for education. So right now, these are things, in my opinion, that you are currently taking care of. Right now, while you're alive, you're handling all the debt, you're handling the mortgage, you're handling the income to the family, and you're paying for educational expenses. Now, if you to be removed from this situation, uh, and you passed away, who's going to handle those things? Are you assigning jobs and duties to your life insurance? You should be assigning jobs and duties to your life insurance, and this is how we're doing it, okay? So, I ask the client right up front, how much is it do you think uh, to bury you? What would you think it would be to pay your way out of life? Most people are going to say ten to fifteen thousand dollars. We'll use a low number, okay? Um, I say, how much debt do you have? Let's assume for a minute that I have found out that this person has thirty thousand dollars of debt, okay? Uh, I ask them how much their mortgage is. Let's assume uh, that their mortgage is $260,000, okay? And then I ask them, okay, do you want your kids to go to school? If you were to pass away, would you want them to have to deal with a family uh, emergency and a, and a passing of a parent and also have to cover college? Or would you want to just make sure that they got a chance to go to college? Many times I hear from people, they say, I'd like my kids to pay for college. That would teach them a lesson. They would learn something from it. And that's true. If you were here, I would love to have the opportunity to have my kids learn that lesson. However, I don't want my kids dealing with a parent passing away and also now I'm going to struggle to go to college. I want to give them the one thing that I couldn't give them while I was alive, which was the opportunity to go to college and do something bigger and better for themselves. So let's assume for a minute that they're going to go to a school, you ask where you want to go, state funded school, private school, whatever you say, let, let them ask. Let's say they have two children and they say, you know, it's going to be about $50,000 per child to get them educated. That's pretty simple. We're talking now $100,000, okay? This one is the only one where you're going to have a little bit of leeway where you're going to have to ask them a question. The question's going to be this, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, how much money do you want to have coming in if the mortgage was paid off? education was handled, right, and you were out of debt. What would you want to have coming in just to supplement income, uh, you know, for your family? Let's say the husband passes away. What would you want coming in, Mrs. Smith? And usually they'll tell me, you know, whatever it may be, let's say $5,000. We'd like to have $5,000 a month. If all those things were paid off, we'd like to have $5,000 a month. Here's a key question. Do you want that coming in for a period of time, let's say 10 years, 20 years, or do you want that to come in forever? Like you're always getting $5,000 coming in. Most of the time, people are gonna say forever. And so this is how you figure that out. It's a simple mathematical equation. So let's assume for a minute that you had a million dollars. If you had a million dollars and you were to earn 6% interest, right now you can go on the market anywhere uh, and, and probably get a guarantee of five or 6% from any of the companies like Prudential or, or ING or, or Allianz or Transamerica. And so let's assume 6%. If you had a million dollars generating 6%, that's $60,000 a year, $5,000 a month. So all you have to do is, is usually use that bucket of a million and figure out what interest rate that you need to get you to that point. So here we are. So this would be $1 million, right? And so now all we have to do is add it up. So we're gonna add this up, so that's 40, that's 300,000, 400,000, 1.4 million. So, this 1.4 million, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, are these numbers too high, too low, or just about right? What are they gonna tell you? 
They have to tell you just about right. Why do they have to say that? Because they gave me the numbers. I didn't make them up. These are their numbers, right? So once they tell us that, we simply say, okay, great. You've got some insurance in place already. You've got 500,000, let's say. You do the math, we're short 900K. Is that something that you want me to try to address the next time we get back together and make sure that we can cover that? And if they tell you, yes it is, they're good to go. If they say, well, I'm not really certain, then you need to invoke a little bit more emotion and you need to say, well, let me ask you a question. If you were to pass away, your family wouldn't be able to get a lot of these goals accomplished. Which one of these are you feel okay living with if you were to die and you know this wouldn't get done? Would you feel okay with not having any income to your wife so she had to go get a job while you, you know, you've got your two children in school? Or would you rather not have your kids go to college? Or would you rather have them have to downsize and move into an apartment? Which one of these things do you, do you feel okay with getting rid of? And usually that jolts them into understanding that they need some more insurance. Most people in this country are grossly underinsured, and that's something that you can get done for pennies on the dollar. If you want to talk about a term policy, you can get that done for you know pennies on the dollar if, if needed. So that is the dime method. If you use that, I think that you should be able to effectively coach and teach your prospects and your clients uh, how much is the appropriate amount of insurance and nobody will be able to tell them that you oversold them or undersold them because that's a simple method that they can understand and they can use. They can't deny the numbers, they need what we have. Make sure you get out there and you do it right. So study the tape, make sure you do it over and over again, rewatch the video, and I think you'll be able to put this into action very, very quickly. All right guys, thank you.